Recently, I made a video about whether gravity was a force. I was scrolling through the comments, always an eye-opening experience, and I noticed one question in a specific comment. This individual asked if the weak nuclear force was a force in the usual sense of the word. It turns out that this is a common question with some interesting surprises, and that means you should sit back because I have a story to tell. To determine whether something is a force, you first need to know what it means to be a force. While there are technical definitions for this video, I want to use a common sense one. A force is something that either causes an object to move or would cause something to move if it wasn't held in place. There are several known fundamental forces. While the question of how many forces exist is more subtle than you'd think, it's common to say that scientists know of four forces. They are gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Gravity, of course, holds us here on Earth. It's a force because if a cat misses a jump, it falls. Gravity satisfies the simple definition and brings us thousands of funny cat videos. Electromagnetism is also a force. After all, a magnet, which is part of electromagnetism, can pick up small metal objects, so it's a force too. The strong nuclear force holds the nucleus of atoms together. We know this because the nucleus usually contains several protons, all of which have a positive electrical charge. In electromagnetism, when you have two charges with the same sign, they push away from one another, which would blow the nucleus apart. Therefore, nuclei wouldn't exist if there wasn't a stronger force holding the nucleus together. So that's three of the four forces. However, when scientists like me talk about the weak nuclear force, we usually just say, and the weak nuclear force is responsible for some forms of radioactivity. And that's completely true, but it, causing things to decay doesn't seem to satisfy the simple force definition we're using here. So that's the origin of that YouTube comment that made me decide to do this video. Does the weak nuclear force cause something to move? Well, to begin with, let's talk about how the weak nuclear force works at the quantum level. Like all quantum forces, the weak force occurs when a matter particle emits a force particle that then flies off to another matter particle that absorbs it. In the weak nuclear force, there are actually two force-carrying particles. There's the electrically neutral Z boson and the electrically charged W boson. In the case of the weak nuclear force interaction, some subatomic particle, say a quark, can emit a Z boson. The Z boson then zooms over to another quark, which absorbs it. That's at least one way in which the weak nuclear force is transmitted. So now, let's get down to brass tacks. When the quark emits the Z boson, the quark will recoil. If it's initially stationary, it will move in the direction opposite the motion of the Z boson. It's not very different from when you're in a boat and throw a heavy sack off to one side. If you do, the boat moves. And, when the other quark absorbs the Z boson, it also recoils. Not so different from someone catching that sack tossed from a boat. So, if a Z boson is exchanged between two quarks, the two quarks can move away from one another, and therefore, the weak nuclear force definitely satisfies the classical, intuitive definition of a force. That's the basic answer. However, the weak nuclear interaction is much more interesting than just being a force. For one thing, both the W and Z bosons are very heavy. They're in the ballpark of a hundred times heavier than a proton. It turns out that the mass of the W and Z bosons is why the weak force is so weak. It's weak because weak force interactions are rare, not because it only pushes a little. To see that, let's dig a bit into this, and I should warn you, there's some quantum stuff involved. It's all kind of mind-blowing. Let's take the W boson as an example. If you look up the mass of the W boson, you'll see that it's 80.35 GeV, or just shy of 86 times as heavy as the proton. But when you're talking about quantum particles, stating the mass is only part of the story. 
In reality, every subatomic particle has a range of masses, with some having a large range and some having a small one. In the case of the W boson, the range is generally between 78.3 and 82.4 GeV. If you find a W boson, there's a good chance that it will have a mass in that range. You can see here a curve which kind of demonstrates this. Where the curve is high, it's likely the mass you find is there. Where it's low, it's unlikely that you can find a W boson with that mass. However, the numbers I just mentioned gives you the typical range. Other masses are possible with rapidly decreasing probability. And the kinds of radioactivity that involve the W boson, what's needed isn't a W boson with a mass of about 80 GeV. What's needed is a W boson with a mass more like 0.001 GeV. And as we can see from the graph here, that's in the you gotta be kidding me territory. W bosons with that mass are like crazy rare. So this explains why the weak force is weak. It's just that W bosons with the required mass are super rare. If a rare weak force interaction actually happens, it really isn't all that weak. It has similar effect as the other known quantum interactions. Since I'm talking about the weak force, I should probably tell you something that is unique about it. It turns out that the weak force is the only one that can change a particle's identity. For example, when the top quark decays, it does so via the weak nuclear force. What happens is the top quark emits a W boson, and when it does, it turns into a bottom quark. When the bottom quark decays, it also splits out another W boson and becomes a charm quark. This identity-changing behavior is usually what scientists talk about when they discuss the weak force. It's not that the weak force doesn't push particles around like all forces do, it's that only the weak force can change particles' identities. So that's the thing we mentioned, because, come on, that's just kind of awesome, you know. So what's the bottom line? The weak force can push particles around, so it's definitely a force like the others are. It's also not really weak so much as it's rare. And it's also the only force that can change a particle's identity when it decays. When you get right down to it, the weak force is just very, very cool. Okay, that was an interesting topic. It's easy for non-experts to get the wrong idea about various particle physics concepts. After all, when guys like me make science videos, we sometimes cut corners and we don't always say everything we know. If you like this deeper dive into the nature of the weak force, please like the video and smash that subscribe button down there. And come back often to hear more about the mysteries of physics, which makes good sense to me because, well, as I'm sure you'll agree, physics is everything.